let's compare and contrast our Canvas app and our model-driven app, right? So this is episode 10 in our really long series on building a model-driven app and a Canvas app all from the same data to do the same things so that we can compare the difference in the building process. Now that both apps are done and they've been imported into a separate environment, now we wanna compare what is the differences between the two because we kind of have both of them in front of us, right? So we'll switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so here we've got, you know, the model-driven app, we've got the Canvas app. And so I'm doing all this from my environment, right, the environment we originally built it in, and I'm all doing it as me. We've proven that it all works as Chewy already. And the only reason I'm doing it over here is because there's more fake data, quite frankly. It was only real difference here. So the first thing I wanna kinda of show you was the model-driven app. As you know, if you've watched, I've got like 300 videos on Canvas apps. I love Canvas apps. But let's be real, right? Model-driven apps, it does a lot for free, right? And that's the first thing I wanna look at here is all this beauty. So for example, you know, if we had built a chart, right? Then we just say show chart and there'd be charts over here. We didn't build it, but it would just be there. We've got this ability to, you know, export the data to Excel, built in, Excel templates, run some Power BI reports, email a link off to this. All of these are things that, yes, I can do all of these things with a Canvas app. The thing is though, is I have to build it, right? If you said build me an export to Excel, no problem. I need to incorporate a Power Automate flow. I put all the data in a collection. I'd send that over to the flow and have the flow spit out a CSV file and then email you that CSV file, right? Like we could do it, but it's not just built in. This, like literally there's an export to Excel here. It, I, I, we didn't build it, we didn't do it. It's just, it's just happening and there's an Excel file. Like that to me is the absurdity of all this. Like, there you go. And it just did the, the fields for my view. I did no work. I got that for free. That's what really excites people a lot by model-driven apps, right? Like if it does what you want and you've got the premium licenses to do it, man, oh man, this idea that it just gives you all this for free is really wild. That was also like we got in here, like we looked at vendors and we clicked on Power Apps 911 and I said related and show me the related products. Like, you know, we built that, or our Canvas app, right? Over our Canvas app, what do we do? We went to products and then we made a drop down here where you could choose Power Apps 911. And so we recreated that. We spent a whole video building that. This was just here. And I just, I find that really, really interesting. On the other hand though, you know, over here, like this looks nice, right? Like, especially if we went up here and said, ampersand high nav bar equals true. So if we did that and hit enter, it'll reload. And so look, we get rid of that ugly bar at the top this app looks nice, right? You got a picture of my face. We got some date and time. We got a little Chewy logo. You know, we don't have all the extra stuff. We made this beautiful screen. But if you're over here, you know, you can't make this thing beautiful, right? This is one of the big knocks on model-driven apps, in my opinion. It, it is what it is. If this works, though, whew, you saw, right? We mailed all this in minutes. Canvas app, it took mm, about an hour to do the same thing. That's one of the big ones. Now, on the other hand, though, one of the things I don't like, remember we went here, and so like if we go to Model Driven 201 Live, uh, right here, and here, let's do this little thing. So notice that the video, or the image here is squished, right? It's the boxy thumbnail version. What if you wanted the high resolution version? Remember we solved that problem over here where we were able to do the high resolution version. How do you do that in Model Driven? As far as I know, you don't, right? Maybe there's some hacky way to do it, but so, so that can be a problem. You can also argue with model-driven apps that all of these buttons, which there are ways to like make most or all of them go away, but they can add a layer of complexity, right? Like sometimes I have to build apps for workers who we don't want to have to train. We don't want them to have to think. Like we just want one big button. They click that big button. They type in the number of hours they work and they hit another big button and it's done, right? Model-driven apps, there, there is a little bit of complexity to them as well. So like, I don't want you to think like, I'm like all, like model driven is the only answer anymore. It's definitely not. It has its challenges as well. But if you're thinking, oh, I could live with this and that serves all my business needs, whew, it's probably a faster way to get something out the door. Now, the other thing that's really interesting with model driven apps, let's grab this, pull it out. So if we hit um, F12, which opens up our dev tools, and then I can go here to device emulation, right? So we'll make this bigger and we'll say, pretend like you're an iPhone. 
look at this. Model-driven apps are responsive natively, right? Like, I didn't do this. They're just automatically responsive. All this stuff just works. What, you wanna throw it on an iPad? Sure, right? It just responds to the mouse screen size. Oh, you wanna rotate that iPad? Oh, look at that, it's happy as pie. That is one pro for model-driven apps, right? We know with Canvas apps, they are not like that. So if I go over here to my Canvas app and hit F12, and then say, hey, stick this thing on an iPhone 12 Pro, like, it's it's super confused, right? It would look better than that, but it would still, it'd be really tiny and very difficult to use. So in a Canvas app, I could make it responsive. That is possible, right? We've, we've talked about that. There's a video up there somewhere about it. But with a Canvas app, once again, you're kind of, you're, 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 you're gonna do a lot of work to make it responsive. This model-driven app, for better or for worse, was just, it's just responsive. Like, that to me is really cool as well. Performance wise, I don't know if I have an opinion on the two. I would guess it would depend on what your app was doing and what your scenario was. Um, there's also other things like if we start to get into more complex scenarios, maybe a Canvas app is probably better there. If you need more design control, Canvas app's definitely better. And so hopefully now we've kind of built this series out, we can continue these conversations and you know and build future videos that kind of bolt in and jump from off of, from some of these. Now. If you're sitting there, you've watched all this, right? But Shane, I have all these questions. That is super fair. So um, what we're going to do uh, tomorrow, today, I don't know, very soon, Juan and I are going to do a AMA, right? And ask me anything. We're gonna go live on YouTube. And so we'll be streaming live. You'll be able to join the chat and ask questions. But one of the best ways to get your questions answered is start putting them in the comments below. If you have, we're gonna go through there, right? We're gonna seed our conversation with the questions you guys pre-ask, and then we'll do that. So that would be your answer. And then also, if you're looking for more training, right, like you're sold on model-driven apps, or you're sold on Canvas, you wanna learn both, then check us out over at training.powerapps911.com. We're running both classes live uh, in about a month, and so you can sign up for either one of the live classes, or we have a special combo deal going on right now where you can sign up for both. If you want the combo deal, just email me, shane at powerapps911.com. I will hook you up with the combo deal. But the combo deal is just for this first class, these first classes here in March and April of 2023. So if you're watching this three years from now, you can email me, I'll say hi, but I'm not promising the same crazy combo deal. If you want to go jump over to the live question and answer session, the link is up there. If the link is not there, Remember, be a YouTube subscriber, get those notifications, so when we go live, you will know about it. And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.